Hey guys, welcome back to some more Super Mario 64. Now we can actually 42. go down to the bases. Uh, the bases? Basement. 42! 42 what? Stars or whatever else is on your mind? Do everything! Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. So time to go to one of my more Life, favorite levels as of late. Hazy Maze Cave. Because this level is extremely broken, actually. I'll explain as soon as we get in. Basically, yeah, please, just please. to sum it up, the level is layered. Where you have like the top floor, middle floor, and basement. But the way they load it out is all the floors are kind of loaded at the same time. And the boundaries are really, really open. So if you manage to go out of the boundary, you can fall like from the top floor straight down to the bottom. It's really, really cool. You know, and I'll be opinion? demonstrating it right here with the first star. There's only one good thing to this level, and that's Dory. Which I barely use, mind you, because I'm landing straight on the platform. So we'll see the, the clipping right here. I love how those bats are just, sort of just floating there. Alright, so, time to demonstrate this. So let's go ahead, ride this elevator down, push on the right side of the wall, and would you look at that, we're right through the floor. <clears throat> Hello. See, in any other level that would just, just squash you. In any other level that would have killed me. But in Hazy Maze Cave, because of how the boundaries aren't really put together all that well, you could just fall straight they through the floors. They just didn't care. Nope. I do believe they fixed this in the DS version. If they didn't, I'd be very surprised. God, this game is so poorly polished. <laughs> First 3D Mario game, what do you expect? The most polished in the world? I don't. Well, at that time, yes. Yeah. Early 90s, man. Oh, not even early 90s. Late 90s. It was, I think, 96? This was 96, yes. This is the only use I get from Dory right here. Just do this. And I don't even raise on the head. I just jump up. Yeah. Oh, I, think I, I think I figured that out until I bought the DS version. I actually had to ground pad them and do that. Really? How really? were you getting up there originally, then? Well, no, I mean, like, ground pounding and letting his head come down like yeah. that. Like I said, how would you get up there originally on the head, then? Um, uh, lots of jumping. I'm oh, pretty sure it's like a sign that tells you. I've, I've tried doing that when I first played myself. It's not fun. Because Dewey's neck looks works just like a slope, so it's really hard to get up there. It really is. Invincible! But yeah, this is one of the two times we get to use the metal cap, so, uh, hope you guys way, like that metal cap music, because this is the real time you're hearing it. The way Mario's so model is, and, then, and how much more noticeable the polygons are when you're in metal form, it makes, yeah. it makes him look like he has, he's wearing a tight. Yeah. Uh, a little so bit, you, I would say. So you never use the combo cap, then? No. Sadly. Aww. But, at the same time, it's faster just to use the vanish cap if you're swimming because it takes you a while to sink so that's why I just skip it although it is but fun to use it as a combination the fact that you can actually use the combo cap I mean that they actually thought of that possibility is kind of cool that's true and there's only yeah, like, two levels you can do that in surprised to see that there are actually separate flags true it is possible to use all three caps though but in order to actually see that, you actually either have to turn on Game Shark codes or hack the game where you can put all three of the blocks in. Yeah. So you don't see it normally, but it's a pretty no, interesting but... combination to see Vanished Metal Flying Mario. Flying Metal works weird. It does, so. Or at least just looks awkward, because I haven't done it in so long, but I know it wasn't natural. It works really weird. Natural. So what are we doing, getting a hundred coins right now? Yeah, because it's the eight red coin mission. So best they usually do it with the eight red coins, right? Especially when bats just walk right into so you. So this die. is the last time you use the metal cap. It's just the yeah, this is the last time because it's it's the fastest way to kill certain enemies and everything. So it's just it makes things a so lot easier. So you only myself. use the metal cap in one video, basically. Basically, yeah. And I only use it for uh. two stars because there was another mission we're doing right after this. You need metal cap for, but. Those you know, little clips I showed you guys to do earlier allows you to skip metal cap. Those cliff signs um, where you can jump up to those things and try and get those stars. I think one of them took me forever to figure out the first time I played this game actually. Those are really cleverly hidden. Yeah. 
I know some of them in there, though, those ledges will trip you up because there are certain ones that have doors, which I've shown both of them, and then there are certain ones that don't, and those really trick you up. The cap system is, once again, just a waste of potential in this game. But yeah, yep. no, the cap system, it was not really used to its full potential, mainly just the combinations. Because I would love to see Why? all the combinations oh. being used. But Mario 64 yeah. ROM hacks kind of fix that issue. It's just, you know, Project 64, True. even though it's the best N64 emulator out there, it's still not great. It still has so many no. issues. Uh, uh, is it? I heard it wasn't finished, is that true? No, especially the new ones. Don't even use like 2.0 or 2.1 because they run the game in a faster frame rate than they should to the point where the games are moving too fast. Mm -hmm. I've seen like a side-by-side -side comparison of like Ocarina of Time going back through a door in and out from Virtual Console to Project 64 2.0 and it's really fast. You wouldn't think it's that, that fast, but it was getting to the point where I think like half a minute into it, the game on the emulator was at least two minutes ahead of the uh, virtual console. Um, is it because on the other hand, like virtual console does underclock games. Well, wait, uh, some of them. Because do you think this is because like older games that ran at 30 FPS a second, and some of them like, did, some of them ran even lower. Four did it at 60, which is like the frame rate most games go at today. Well, at the same time, so does the Wii Virtual Console. So it's not like Project 64 is doing anything different. It's just the newer versions, they're running it faster than 60. It's like 65 or something like that. It's a little faster mm -hmm. and it gets too noticeable in certain games. <sighs> yeah, for example, in Glover, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I, I tried to play like Rayman 2 on there for an instance as well. and. It was way too fast to control. It's like I was able to five like fire like five shots a second. It was that fast. I I should not be able to fire five shots a second. No. At least when you whenever you get a hundred coins in this game, they actually pop right by you. Sunshine. True. I mean that was the one issue that Mario 64 had. Well, a lot of Mario platforms do the same, but some of them were a little better with it. It's just the fact that when you collect the star. It boots you out of the level and you have to go back in. But Mario 64 was probably the worst one for the instance because most of the stars you can get in any mission. So it's not like anything's changing. Yeah, but at the same time, a lot of them are quite close together. So actually, the, the path there is half the mission. True, that's why I didn't mind as much because since they were so close together and they're fast to get to, it wasn't that noticeable. It's just when you do the 100 coin ones, it's that's when it's mostly noticeable. But the 100 coins don't boot you. True, once you get that 100 coin, you stay in the level. That's what Banjo-Kazooie kind of like did themselves. They kind of base it off of this, because getting booted out of the level a lot kind of breaks the flow. So keeping you in it, they, they just found that was a better idea, just like the 100 coin stars do. Which does yeah, work well, for this kind of platform. The thing is, by default, it works better in the you because um, all of stars put you in a position where you wouldn't be able to get away from. Oh, yeah. I mean, later games, it's most notably, especially the Galaxy games, because there was no way you'd be able to get back. Oh, and this one, I'm at, this is a great mission to explain here. Metalhead Mario can move. Uh, you don't need Metal Cat 4. And this is something I recently learned, because... I told you before, you can clip out of the boundaries by going through the sides and go to the lower areas like we did earlier. This is our instance of it. If you triple jump and then do that to get off the side of the wall, you have enough momentum to hit that switch underwater. You're not supposed to do that normally. You're supposed to use a metal cap in order to hit the switch. Because if you just jump in the water, you yeah, won't have enough momentum like, to hit it. I was it. wondering, like, how you were going to get that without the metal cap, because you said that one time was like the last, but I was like, oh shoot, how is he going to get that switch over yeah, there? It, if yeah, if you didn't have enough momentum from doing that, you wouldn't be able to get the, uh, the switch hit. Because that actually takes a, uh, quite a number of tries. I mean, that was probably like 10 tries in or something. It is really difficult to do, but once you can do it, it makes the mission a lot faster. Rest in peace, metal cap. Part 5, part 5. <laughs> Basically. 
Good lord, so many platforming segments in this game are so pointless. Well, especially when you know the certain tricks like this and, you know, Metal Cap being useless. Oh shit, I blinked. <laughs> what I miss? Oh, you was collecting a star. <laughs> Nothing major. <laughs> Some of the stars are that fast, though, so. There is that. Why is that door so weird? Uh, I know I know certain doors uh, doors like that in the game don't load all the way, which is weird. Dur oh, but the, the texture know, of the door, door is like hieroglyphs. Yeah. It, it's Why? supposed to be metal, but... Uh, I know it's a little hard to tell. It's certain this level is just all kinds of weird. That's no, no, why I like it so I mean, much now. That, that's the first one you go through. I mean, that one I get, but the first one you go through has like a star on it and... Yeah, this level is so technical, and that's why I really like it. Like I said earlier, it, this is probably become one of my more favorite levels of the game because of how technical it is. It's just really enjoyable once you know all the nooks and crannies of it. I mean, like this store, for example. Okay. You can get this without the elevator if you have enough force to push you okay. through the gate. Can we stop raiding mm -hmm. on the glitches for a second and just like talk about it structurally? Uh, I'm not. That's like, what I'm talking about. I'm not raiding on glitches. I'm raiding on just this, the technical aspect of it. Because the way the level is structured, that's what I really like. Industrial. Yeah. Because glitch wise, well, I can just say as a whole, this game is in in interesting and enjoyable. I mean, that, that door right there. Right there. Yeah. The hell? I see what you mean. Those doors that had like that the does... certain star patterns on them, they, they do kind of look like a hieroglyphic pattern. Yeah, that does not belong in this level. Yeah, you would think that would be in the Shifting Sands level, but it's here instead. I think, yeah, it's a, I think it's a map, actually. Yeah. I still never got that. So I think now we're off to... I never could figure out what that means. It's Lava Land? Like, That's right. There, are there, like, pipes or something? Uh, what? In the room with the portal to Hazy Maze Cave. Was that, like, a pipe room or organ room or something? Uh, huh? I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know. I thought those like pipes on the walls look like organs. You know? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be the boiler room. I think it is too, but there's no real way to actually just determine it. The rooms aren't really labeled, so no, I not as much as in the galaxy, for example, yeah. where it still didn't make sense. Yeah, that's true. Nice bully fight. Yeah. And then the bully like fights the go by pretty smoothly. But, Without uh, any animation. Yeah, that, there's that too. <laughs> uh, the fun fact about the bullies too is you can just jump into them to knock them back. So if you can jump on the boy when he's falling down this next mission, you can just kill him instantly. I've never mm -hmm. gotten the work yet, but it's possible. It's just you know what's inter You know what's interesting about the painting for this level? Basically that face you see there? In Alpha Face, that was supposed to be the boss for this level. Really? Yes. Wow, I wonder how but that it, would work. It basically cut. It basically was removed by Betaface because they did, just didn't have the graphic power in it and forced to pull it off. That would make sense because these earlier 3D games they just didn't have the power for it. Like, for example, with Sonic Adventure, they talked about chaos looking exactly like how water would look, but because of system limitations, it was just all blue and it didn't even look like water. So okay, they got so to fix it later. Mario 64 never really got that with the lava monster, but you can kind of tell they tried to bring it back a little bit with like uh, the molten creatures in Mario Galaxy 2. They kind of look similar to that. Mm -hmm. just, so that's just why a the bit. flame monsters there. I always thought the creators were like high off their asses when they created that design. Actually, what the heck am I saying? No. Those lava monsters don't even look like that. <laughs> Hello. I'm not thinking. <laughs> but I, yeah, um, I think the, the first engine on the N64 that could actually render something like that would be the Rare engine. But that was I way, way past this. I think so, yeah, because Rare had some more time to work with the system's power. Like, Banjo-Kazooie yeah. had a lot of in uh, innovations going into it originally, with the whole entire yeah. stop and swap originally going to be just a cartridge swap. Yeah, but also, for example, it boss like Big Poo. Oh, yeah. Big there was Poo. a lot of graphic I, I think this right was there. his name, is right? Great Mighty Poo, yeah. Great Mighty Poo, yeah. That had a lot of graphics going into it right there. 
Like the most graphic rendered pile of poo you've ever seen. I don't know if that's a good thing I think, or a bad I think thing. That was I think that was actually a tagline for the game, wasn't it? I, I don't know if it actually was, I just made that up I've never actually had a chance to play Conker's Bad Fur Day, to be honest. I played a little bit of it, it's okay, it's just... There's a lot of, it's like, okay. M-rated that's... humor, and it's just... It's something you really just have to get into, and I'm not really the type to get into it. That's the best way to put it, it's okay.